hello uh, in this uh, particular lecture we are going to discuss about the plating of uh, nano composites that means we are going to do the coatings of uh, nano composites and uh, by which we can modify the surface of that particular materials so before going to start we have to know that why we are going to do the coatings and how it is helping to the surface engineering aspects so coating are used to enhance the resistance against different environmental agents such as a various types of corrosions create new compatibility of surface so these all are the things if you remember that from the first lecture i am discussing all these things when uh, we have discussed about the abrasions we have discussed about the wear we have discussed about the different problems which we are facing to our materials so just to eliminating those problems just to make our surface more actives more uh, better than the previous one we are going to do the coatings of that particular materials not only that by doing the coatings the outer uh, properties of that particular materials we can it can be changed like our material is hydrophilic by doing any hydrophobic coatings we can make it as a hydrophobic or maybe it can work as a hydrophobic materials or maybe we can make some kind of coatings by which our surface can be active and that particular mediums or maybe inside some chemicals. So, these all are the different techniques or maybe the different reasons by which we are doing the surface engineering methods. So, among main objective of this film which are of great interest for a long time one can name promoting coating quality include increase of lifetime, lowering cost of productions, repair and maintenance, adapting with environment. Suppose when we are talking about some kind of cutting tools or maybe the bearings, continuously the two surface is rubbing by which the uh, temperature is generating and the material properties or maybe that surface is getting eroded. So, when we are doing the coatings, we can make or maybe generate the new life to that particular materials not only that we can enhance the new life and we can enhance the new surface so that the material can work properly and also it will reduce the production cost no need to make it the further or maybe it is cheap to do this kind of coatings and also it is useful for that particular environment in which it can work properly. So, here are the some examples when you are talking about some kind of coatings over there. So, from that particular case you can see that the red one is called the silica molecules and the black one is called the titanium oxide. So, selenium titanium oxide. So, simple we are doing some kind of coatings first initially we are having that substrate then on that particular mesh some cracking has been done by which the corrosion is taking place. So, here we are using some titanium dioxide coatings. So, after certain time this titanium dioxide is reacting with the silica or maybe that silicon and they are forming a new material which will be acting as a anti corrosive one or maybe that self healing of that particular material will be taking place. Now, here is the total summary of the material properties change associated with the nano composite coatings. So, what are the properties generally we can get after doing the coating of these particular materials. So, first one is called the properties of the nano composites when we are talking about the mechanical properties it can increase the hardness it can increase the elastic modulus it can increase the toughness it can increase the bond strength so these all are the aspects by uh, by which uh, for which we are doing the coatings of that particular nano materials it can increase the tribological aspects of those materials in terms of abrasions, erosion, scratch, resistance, wear rate, volume loss. When we are talking about the electrical properties, it can increase the conductivity, photocurrent, charge discharge capacity, dielectric permittivity. When we are talking about the thermophysicals process means where that as a um, thermal properties are getting involved for that particular case may be expansion coefficient, shock resistance, cycling life, diffusivity and conductivity these properties can be uh, increased when you are talking about the other properties like os, uh, osseo integrations, decomposition rate, photocurrent, resistivity, coercivity, corrosion current, wet loss, eddy current loss, saturation magnetization may be decreased. So, the thing is that here it uh, by choosing the proper coating we can enhance the particular properties uh, some particular properties of that particular material. So, either we can enhance the properties we can decrease the properties or maybe one properties it should we need that it should be increased one properties it should be decreased by choosing the proper uh, coating materials we can enhance one properties we can uh, degrade one properties of that particular material too. So, now 
uh, uh, here the general concepts that how we are going to do the coatings of that particular materials. So, actually there are, uh, there are two uh, different concepts. One concept is called that matrix reinforced where the reinforcing phase is within nanoscales and another one is called the layered coatings where the thickness of individual layers are within nanoscale dimensions. So, here the top of the uh, coatings it is a composite types in which we are incorporating some kind of nanoparticles. It is mixed with some polymers or maybe some metals then it is preparing a coating uh, a composite coating materials then that materials we are applying onto our substrate to do the coating. And for the second case simply we are having the substrate suppose I want to make a coat of one material. So, I will give a layer of that materials then if I want some another material I can give a layer of that particular material. So, by layer by layer techniques we can do the coatings of this particular materials or maybe this surface engineering. So, what are the functional coatings? So, there are several types of functional coatings. So, from the name itself functional coatings you can understand that when we are doing some kind of coatings they will of course, they will enhance certain properties not only that they will do some kind of reactions with the surface too. So, that is why it is called the functional coating that they will functionalize the surface itself. The term functional coatings describe systems which possess besides the classical properties of a coating that means decorations and protections and additional functionality it will generate. So, that is why the name of these particular coatings is known as the functional coatings. These additional functionality may be diverse and depend upon the actual applications of a coated substrate. Typical examples of functional coatings are self cleaning, easy to clean, anti graffiti, anti fouling, soft fill and the antibacterial. So, these all are the examples of these functional coatings. From the name uh, from the right hand side figure you can understand that whether we are going for some kind of mechanical bearings, maybe fasteners, some kind of electronic circuits, some kind of tools or maybe some kind of uh, cell filling uh, bio waste materials or maybe to make that materials may be hydrophobic or may be hydrophilic we can do this kind of functional coatings. So, here the types and applications of the functional coatings typical expectations of the functional coatings include durability, reproducibility, easy applications and cost effectiveness, tailored surface morphology and the environmental friendliness. So, these all are the aspects by which or maybe for which we are going to do the functional coatings. So, here the functional coating performed by means of physical, mechanical, thermal and the chemical properties. Chemically active functional coatings perform their activities either at flame substrate interfaces that means anti corrosive coatings in the bulk of the flame, fire retardant or in tomb sense coatings or at air flame interface antibacterial or maybe the self cleaning. So, here this is the chart of that uh, what type of functional coatings generally we can do. So, for optical properties, photoluminescent coatings, anti reflective coatings, photochromatic coatings generally we are using for our specs, we are using for some kind of biomedical applications, we are using for the glass substrates or maybe the glass materials this kind of techniques. For structural properties, hard coatings, anti abrasion coatings for making any kind of cutting tools or maybe that any kind of machining operations, any kind of machines we are going to use this kind of coatings. When we are talking about the electrical properties, anti static coating, conductive coatings, dielectric coatings generally we are going to do for achieving some better electrical properties. With hygienic properties we can go for some antimicrobial coatings generally we can use this kind of uh, techniques for our food packaging uh, technology. Then with thermal properties, instrumentation coatings, heat resistant coatings, light resistant coatings generally we can do. When we are talking about some physical chemical properties, some photocatalytic coatings, hydrophilic coatings, hydrophobic coatings. So, there are several number of applications uh, or maybe uh, techniques are there by which we can change our material properties or maybe the surface of that particular material properties. So, first we are going to discuss about the anti corrosive coatings. So, when we are going to do the anti corrosive coatings generally we are applying this type of coatings for certain materials where that materials when it is working may be it can create certain kind of corrosions. So, just to prevent that material we are doing a coatings which can act as a anti corrosive in that particular environment. So, here organic coatings are applied onto metallic substrate in order to avoid the detrimental effect of corrosions. The best example of this kind of coatings is nothing but the paint. So, when you are doing any kind of welding, any kind of machining operations just to save that materials uh, from formations of any kind of oxides or maybe the sulphides, we are doing a 
uh, coatings of paints, so by which um, uh, it cannot react with the environment itself, so that it will be anti corrosions acting as anti corrosions materials. The anti corrosive performance of a coating depends upon several parameters like adhesion to metal, thickness, permeability, other relevant properties of the coating. Yes, of course, what type of material I am going to use, whether it will properly attach with our substrate or not. And then what is the thickness, because if the thickness will be lesser, then simply the moisture or maybe some kind of gas it can go inside with the base metals and it can react. Then what is the porosity of that particular coating materials, if the porosity will be bigger. So, any kind of molecules like water molecules or maybe that vapor molecules or maybe any kind of other impurities that can easily go inside and do the reaction with the base metals. So, these all are the parameters by which we have to choose the anti corrosive coating materials. So, classes of anti corrosive coatings generally organic types, coal tars, phenolics, acrylics, epoxy and urethanes, inorganic types, silicate, ceramic and glass, conversion, anodizing, phosphatizing, then chromate and the molybdate and the metallic coating some galvanizing, vacuum vapor depositions, electroplating and the diffusions. So, these all are the different types of anti corrosive coatings are available. So, here generally when we are talking about that uh, anti corrosive coatings how it is the real life scenario. So, we are having that substrate on which we are doing the coating and top of the coating the atmosphere or mechanical damage is taking place. That means, that it is uh, reacting with the environment or maybe some other shocks. Then, what happened after certain time the barrier integrity broken moisture and corrosive species pass through these materials and then directly it can react with the substrate and it can deteriorate the material properties. So, just to stop all these things we can go for the anti corrosive coatings. Here is a best examples uh, that where we are using the coatings of some epoxy resins and polyethylene some kind of polymers on the steel. So, in between that we are putting certain kind of binder otherwise this polyethylene and epoxy will not properly adhere to each other may be after certain time they will segregate or maybe uh, they will peel off each other. So, just to make them more sticky we are using the binder materials inside this tube. Next one is called the high thermal resistant and fire retardant coatings. From the name itself you can understand that this type of coatings we are using for certain materials, which materials we are going to use for the high temperature applications. So, just to save that materials, that materials should not degrade at to the up to that high temperature and the flame will not occur to that temperature, just we are doing the coating of certain things which will help to make the material uh, to work into that perfect temperature. So, high thermal resistant coatings are e required for a wide variety of metallic substrates that we encounter in everyday life including non-stick cookware, barbecues and the boilers. So, non-stick cookware are the perfect example for this kind of techniques. Fluorine or silicon based products are used to obtain a high thermal resistant. Binders such as phenolic or epoxy are used to prepare high thermal resistant coatings. So, here you can see that we are applying certain, we are using some materials at the flame also it is not degrading. So, these all are the different applications or maybe that some advancement of the surface engineering by the using this high thermal resistant or maybe the fire retardant coatings. Next, we are going to discuss about some scratch and abrasion resistant coatings. This one generally maximum times we are applying for our specs or maybe some kind of glass or maybe the windows or maybe some kind of equipment where we have to see what is going on inside. So, these all are the things. So, when the maximum times when you are uh, just uh, taking out our glass from the uh, eyes, maybe our fingers can touch with the glass itself. So, what will happen? The fingerprint will be stamped onto our glass. So, and also uh, sometimes we are taking this glass into the some uh, rainy seasons. So, maybe some water droplet or maybe some rain water can directly comes onto the glass. So, if the surface of the glass will not be proper, so what will happen that water droplets or maybe the water bubbles will stick with the glass itself or maybe some fingerprint will already be present or uh, with the in the glass or maybe it there is some kind of scratches because when we are um, uh, wearing this glass and going through the environment means by walking or running or maybe driving so some kind of dust particle comes and they can do some kind of scratching onto the glass substrate um, or maybe the glasses. So, just to stop all this kind of nuisance we uh, can use certain kind of coatings which can help us 
to uh, uh, yeah, use it as a some scratch resistant or abrasion resistant glass coatings. So, coatings are susceptible to damage caused by scratch and abrasions. Scratch resistance can be obtained by incorporating a greater number of cross links in the coating binder. To obtain optimal scratch resistance, the correct combination of hardness and flexibility is required. Organic inorganic hybrid films are paving the way for scratch resistant coating developments. Nowadays, we are using some siloxane encapsulated silicon dioxide nanoparticles are used to develop scratch and abrasion resistant coatings. So, this is the some latest materials by which we can stop some kind of scratch or maybe that some kind of abrasions onto the glass itself. Next one is called the self cleaning coatings. So, from the name itself you can understand that here we are applying some materials which can be activated uh, by the environmental itself. So, there is no need of any kind of binders or maybe any kind of outside activations to activate those materials. So, today the term lotus effect and self cleaning are the synonymous. So, if we see the lotus leaf actually, any water particles comes onto it, it will not stick with the lotus leaf, it is totally fully hydrophobic uh, materials or maybe that hydrophobic in nature. Not only that any dust particle cannot stick with the lotus leaf. So, this is the perfect example of this self cleaning coatings. So, here we are not adding any outside materials or maybe foreign particles to that particular leaf. The lotus leaf itself is a self uh, acclaimed uh, um, property having the self acclaimed properties by which it can resist the hydrophilicity or maybe that uh, additions of any dust particle onto it. So, Barth Lot and co workers showed that the self cleaning property of lotus leaves was due to their specialized surface morphology and hydrophobicity. During the past few years, self cleaning coatings using photocatalytic titanium dioxide, especially with the anatase crystalline form or maybe the anatase phase, generally we are calling it, have attracted considerable attention both in academic and industrial sectors. Other beneficial effect of TI2 in it is its super hydrophilic behavior commonly known as the water sheathing effect. So, here is a one very good examples generally we are giving it. Suppose, we are having the substrate on that we are giving some hydrophilic coatings. So, now first may be some dust particle is coming and it is depositing onto the substrate. So, when we are trying to wash this dust particle we are putting some water particles from the top. But water particles will not go to that material unless and until there will be some dust particles. But if the coating material will be some hydrophilic materials, so automatically it will attract the water particles inside. So, what a water particle will do? Water particle will try to go inside the dust, dust particles and it will flush the dust, dust particles from top of the surface. So, this is a very good examples for the self cleaning coatings. Here also one very good examples of the carbon nanotubes generally we are using for some biological applications. So, that can be activated some properties by which some kind of virus or bacteria cannot go inside that material or maybe it can be uh, reflected from the surface of that particular material. Now, we can do this kind of coatings for the antibacterial applications also. So, nowadays uh, when we are talking about some kind of materials like barrier materials, some kind of packaging materials, some kind of biomedical applications or maybe some kind of materials which can be used for uh, some kind of uh, sophisticated applications. So, generally we are talking about some kind of antibacterial coatings. So, micrograins, uh, microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi or viruses represent potential threats for our modern hygienic lifestyle. So, microbial growth on coated substrates may have several adverse consequences. To stop all these things, we are doing some kind of antibacterial coating over there. So, today more emphasis is placed on the development of biorepulsive without killing antibacterial coatings. Organic biocides include polymers, tertiary alkyl amines and organic acids while inorganic biocides include silver, zinc oxide, copper oxide, titanium dioxide, selenium are used with the microcapsules in order to increase the longevity and efficiency of the antibacterial coatings. So, simply we are adding some kind of materials on top of that surface, so that any kind of bacteria or virus will not react with the substrate, simply it will repulsed from the surface itself, so that that coating is known as the antibacterial coating. 
Next is called the anti fouling coatings. So, this is the best example that this material we are using for our ships, for our submarines, for naval, naval purpose. So, generally when the materials is going inside the water, if the water will flow in a particular speed, there will not be any formations of any algae or any kind of other bacteria, bacteria or maybe the virus. But when the water speed will be almost uh, less or maybe that the vehicle is totally stopped inside the water, maybe some kind of algae formation, some kind of virus formation, some kind of bacteria formations can be possible on that particular materials. So, here we are developing some kind of materials which will help that substrate material not to form the algae on top of that or maybe the uh, 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 deposition of that bacteria or maybe that plants or maybe some kind of marine animals on top of that. So, that it can extend that uh, ship life or maybe the marine life. So, for reasons of stringent legislation and toxicity, the use of biocides is restricted on a daily basis. Generally, previously we are using some kind of biocides which will restrict to form this kind of marine animals, plants, bacteria or maybe that macro fouling onto the material itself. But generally this kind of materials is having the toxicity, this is not good for the environment. So, that is why we are going to use some kind of non biocidational coatings which does not have any kind of side effects to the environmental also. So, here for example, tributyl tin is a highly efficient marine biocide, but it is no longer used due to its toxicity. It is important that biocide does not have any adverse effects on marine life while carrying out its anti-fouling activity. For long term anti-fouling effects, either control release or contact active biocides are required. So, based on that because it is going inside the water, it, if it will generate certain kind of toxic gases, maybe that is not good for the animals which they are presenting inside the water itself. So, and, and maybe some kind of uh, uh, plants. So, that is why we do not use this kind of materials, but we can use some kind of materials which will be biocompatible, so that it will not give any kind of toxic gases or maybe any harmful reagents to the water itself. Recently, a number of anti-fouling products have been developed using micro encapsulation technology. For the non-biocidal approach, polymers with low surface energy are used in order to avoid the addition of marine organisms and silicon elastomers are widely used for this particular purpose. So, here from this particular figure, you can understand that we are grafting some kind of polymers and which is acting as a anti-fouling polymers over there. So, we are putting some kind of initiators inside the polymers, then when it is uh, some kind of bacteria is uh, directly coming with that particular uh, coating materials, the polymer will be automatically activated and it will reflect it. So, that the algae formations or bacteria formations will not be taking place onto the substrate material. Next is called the conductive coatings with the core cell particles. This is the best example. Suppose we are having some insulator materials. So, just to make the conducting materials, simply we are doing the coatings of some materials which is conductive in nature. So, like this way we can change the total material electrical properties. So, in this particular case, some kind of organic coatings are non-conductive in nature. So, in order to produce conductive coatings, generally we are using some carbonaceous materials in terms of carbon black graphite or maybe some kind of metal particles are usually added to the organic resins. The different possibilities for the design of conducting coatings can be summarized as follows. To use a conductive polymer as a continuous matrix to addition of a conducting pigments into the organic resins. So, from this particular figure you can understand that we are having some uh, core, we are doing some kind of surface modifications, then we are doing some kind of polymer growth, it is, we are making it as a some kind of core shells and then from the inside we are removing the core material. So, the hollow particle it is acting some kind of conducting materials. Here is also the same thing for uh, some kind of electronics applications, we are using some kind of particles, we are uh, for the battery lithium ion battery for cathode terminal, generally we are using some kind of materials and then we are coating that materials with some conducting materials to make it more conductive or maybe that more efficient. Next, enhancing coating functionalities with the micro capsules. So, generally we are using this one for uh, this technology for the micro capsule applications. So, micro capsules can be used in a wide variety of applications since the versatility of micro encapsulation technologies offers unlimited combination of course 
and cell materials for their productions. To date, few investigations have been made into possible applications of microcapsules in functional coating developments. Microcapsules are applied onto substrate in various ways. For example, they are may be sprayed over an existing coating layer, perhaps to provide immediate release of lubricants or perfumes. The most two common process of applying microcapsules in coatings are to incorporate them into a coating formulations by their electrolytic co-depositions with the metal ions. So, here is the examples that how we are going to use these applications for the uh, technology for the micro encapsulations. Another interesting example is to use the microcapsule in the development of self healing coatings. For this microcapsule containing monomer, cross linker or catalyst are incorporated into a coating matrix such that when a coating ruptures, the microcapsules along with rupture break open and release their contents itself. So, that thus uh, uh, it is uh, something the best example of that like a punctureless uh, tire. So, punctureless tube may be whatever that if there will be any puncture, so automatically that material will come and it will uh, uh, get that healing. So, that the air will be uh, no, uh, the tire will not lose the air pressure, so that it can work perfectly fine. So, this is also one kind of coating techniques by which we if we are doing some kind of coatings, if the outer side coatings will be damaged, then the from the inside the material will come and it will heal that proper particular zone, so that the coatings will remain same. Other applications, micro encapsulated dyes used to formulate color coatings and forming agents. So, like this for the targeted drug delivery, we can use some kind of micro encapsulations by which we can detect that how our um, uh, medicines or maybe the drug is working inside the body from the outside we can detect properly. Not only that micro capsules containing perfumes, insecticides, chemicals and heat or pressure sensitive dyes can also be used for the functional coating preparations. So, here you can see that there is one materials which is yellow in color inside the uh, in the center. Now, we are doing the layer by layer coating techniques to make it more active or more maybe more functional. So, now we have come to our last slide which is nothing but the summarizations of this whole uh, uh, lecture. So, here the micro encapsulations has already been proven as a successful technology for con commercial applications in the pharmaceutical and agrochemical industries and more recently also in the textile industry. The technology allows combination to meet the properties of different materials that are difficult or even impossible with other available technologies. Yes, I, because the same material we can use for the several applications based on the coating techniques. If there is any problem to that particular material, we can do the coating so that we can increase the self life, we can change its properties. Not only that, we can change the, uh, we can uh, increase the production rate, we can decrease the cost of that particular materials by these kind of coatings. Not only that, whatever the exact application I need, based on that I can choose that particular materials and I can do the coating. At present, the industry major problem is to provide functional coatings that are easy to apply and have long term stability. Consequently, attentions will be focused in this area. So, nowadays lots of scientists, lots of, lots of researchers are particularly working on this particular topic to make the material more versatile and its application area will be more uh, widely used. Thank you.